Today I'm going to share with you uh, a few different instruments. And we're going to talk about uh, talk about them, and we'll talk about their bores. Remember, the word bore describes the shape of the inside of the instrument. It's critical to us because the bore defines the shape of the airstream that vibrates. This instrument you've probably seen before is a soprano saxophone. It is. Uh, it happens to be a straight soprano. Soprano saxophones today come in many shapes and in various shapes. Some of them are straight. Sometimes they have a bent neck where this is bent about 45 degrees. Sometimes this top is bent and it has a bend down here making a bow and it looks like an alto in shape with a S shape. Curved sopranos is what we call those. Soprano saxophone is in the key of B flat, and it's a saxophone in that it has a conical bore, a bore shaped as a cone from the small end of the mouthpiece down to the big end of the bell. It's much, much bigger at the bell than it is up at the top. And it's the shape of the bore that makes it sound like a saxophone and uh, allows it to overblow an octave. When you press the register key on any saxophone, it goes up an octave for many, many fingerings. That's a little bit of what a soprano sounds like. Let's compare it to the instrument we're studying right now, the clarinet, which uh, also has a single reed uh, and a ligature that fixes it to our mouthpiece. I haven't wet my reed yet, so I'll do that. They look similar. Many times well, they look similar in shape and, and the mouthpiece. And uh, having performed many times on soprano, I've often been commented on how, how people liked how people liked that gold-colored clarinet when they were talking about the, the soprano saxophone. It's not a clarinet at all. It's a saxophone. It sounds like a saxophone. It, it operates like a saxophone. The clarinet... Clarinets are made out of wood. Generally, we've talked about that. Wood or plastic has a much different shape to the bore. If you exclude the bell and take the bell off, it has some conicity in that it's conical to some extent. It's somewhat smaller here than it is down at this at the far end. Of course, the bell flares out, but <coughs> it's much closer to a cylinder. It's more cylindrical. And there are variations in the shape. Uh, many clarinets uh, bulge out a little bit here, and, and manufacturers experiment with that rate of taper and, and so forth. And the clarinet does not overblow an octave. It overblows a twelfth. It's the only instrument in our, in our Western orchestra and band that overblows a twelfth. G on the clarinet and press the register key with my thumb, it does not go to a G an octave above, it goes to the D uh, twelfth above. That's what we mean when we say it overblows a twelfth. <laughs> any note, any note we play, without the register key, if we just roll our thumb up slightly and touch the register key, you'll overblow a twelfth. This is the low C. And if you know your music theory, you know it will overblow to the G above the staff. That's due to the shape of the bore, primarily. This instrument is a bit of a curiosity. They used to be fairly popular in this country. 
but they're not at all anymore. I bought this at a garage sale for maybe $30. <laughs> so I probably paid too much, but at any rate, it um, it is similar to both the soprano saxophone and the clarinet. Uh, it looks like a soprano saxophone in that they're both made of metal and they both have, I don't have a mouthpiece on this thing yet, but, um, and they both have a single reed with a mouthpiece. And they are the same length. If you were to compare them, set the bells evenly on my chair, you'll see that these two instruments are about the same length. So they put, they're also in the same key, in the key of B flat. This silver one is a clarinet. It's a metal clarinet which maybe you've never seen before, but um, we can use it to demonstrate the fact that um, it's a clarinet because of the shape of the bore and not, not because of the material from which it's made. If you look at the bore, you can see that it's, it's a little bigger here, but from in the main body, uh, it's just almost a perfect cylinder from what you can see, just eyeballing it. I'm sure we could measure it and there'd be some flare as all clarinets do, and then the bell flares out at the bottom. It looks much narrower than a wooden clarinet because the wooden clarinet, the walls of the body are so much thicker. The walls of my wooden clarinet are probably, if you were to look at this, the, the diameter of the walls of the instrument, uh, probably uh, maybe a half an inch thick which makes the whole thing, in effect, look from the outside to be a greater diameter. But if you measure the inside diameters, I think you'd find them to be very close to being the same. I can play this for you, and you hear it sounds like a clarinet. You can't tell really much difference. This is a metal clarinet, and uh, it, it demonstrates to us that the tone quality of an instrument is defined not so much by the material from what it's made, but much more from the shape of the bore, the interior diameter. For that reason, manufacturers uh, understand this and they experiment with and develop their own characteristics of bores. That's what makes a Yamaha saxophone sound different from a Selmer saxophone. And they respond different, they feel differently. It's the same for all wind instruments. So an oboe manufacturer like Lauben has spent many many years trying slight variations in the bore here and there and across the whole thing to improve the tone quality, response, intonation, and all performance factors. That's a little bit about the bore, and it helps illustrate the question that was on the test that confused some of you last week when I said the, the most important variable when determining an instrument's tone is, and I was looking for the interior, the, the bore is really what it is, because it's the bore that that makes this sound like a clarinet. Of course, there are probably some minor differences in tone quality between, between a metal instrument and a wooden instrument. Today, if you look in your woodwind brasswind catalog, you'll see many options for, for saxophones, for example, with different finishes. You can get a, you can get a saxophone with, with the traditional clear lacquer, it looks gold colored like this. And you just see the brass through a clear sealer that they put on it. You can also get sa saxophones that have been plated in silver, gold, or you can see that sometimes the outside is, is lacquered black. And um, it's my opinion that those color differences look cool but they don't necessarily change the tone quality if you were to do a subjective analysis. 
I've heard these instruments played with my back turned, and I honestly don't hear a difference between, I can't reliably tell the difference between a silver-plated saxophone and a gold-plated saxophone. They sound the same to me. But if, if somebody wants to buy a gold-plated saxophone because they like the way it looks or they like the idea of having a gold instrument, I think that's totally fine. Just some food for thought. <laughs>